Today on Detroit Muscle, give me fuel, give me fire. Give me a way to run that 1,100 horsepower big block in our Monster Mercury project. Today, we'll show you how to plumb a fuel system for a big power application, as well as building custom exhaust that'll let this mean mother blow your house down. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Now we've got our 72 Mercury Marquee back here in the shop and we just finished putting an almost 1100 horsepower big block under the hood. Now we're getting ready to turn this thing into 19 feet and two tons of fun. But first, this thing's gonna drink a lot of fuel so we need to figure out how to get a fuel system installed. Oftentimes, whenever you think about the term fuel system, carburetor comes to mind. Now this is the one that came off of our 429 originally. Well, somebody had done an upgrade. It's a 600 manual choke vacuum secondary, and it ran really well on it, but since we're making that big old power number, we're gonna need a big old carburetor. This is Holley's 1150 Ultra Dominator carburetor, and has several features to it. A few of them, well, it has a TPS mount just in case you're running data acquisition. It also has dual 50 pumps, and with its all aluminum construction, makes it a lot lighter as opposed to the earlier models. Now we're not gonna bother you guys with showing you how to bolt on a carburetor because you've done it or seen us do it a whole bunch of times, but there is a lot more to do on our fuel system. Now to feed that big Dominator carb, we need a massive fuel system. So we turn to Holly and Earl's for a bunch of components that are gonna feed it. Now we've got everything from the hose to the wiring, hose ends, regulator, gauge, the filters, and of course the pump. Now this pump, it's 160 gallon per hour aluminum Dominator pump and it'll support up to 1,800 horsepower, so we don't have to worry about starving that big block. And check this out. This is the latest from Holly. It's called Hydromat. And what it does is it acts as a bladder inside your tank, replaces a traditional pickup tube. It's available in all different types of sizes and shapes, and you can even order custom ones. It works with stock and aftermarket fuel cells. Perfect for drag racers, road racers, drifters, or anytime the fuel's gonna be sloshing around in the tank. Now it has a 15 micron filter built in, so there's no need for a pre-filter. And with its bladder design, basically if it's touching fuel, it's gonna get to your engine. Now, before we can install that into our tank, which we've already removed out of our mercury, we need to do some things to get this tank ready. First thing to do is get this pickup and sending unit pulled out so that we can access the inside. Then we'll grab a jug of gas tank flush and dump it on in. This is basically a cleaner and degreaser that's non-flammable and non-corrosive. Should be good. Now that we got all the cleaner in there, I'm gonna slosh this around a little bit, get all those fumes out. smells gone. Looks like old Mark has himself a Mr. Noise inside that tank. Ooh. How long that's been in there? All right, so we've got our tank all cleaned out now and dry, so we don't have to worry about any fumes left here when we get ready to drill our holes. The reason we need to drill into our tank is because if you look here at our sending unit, this is the hole that was used for our feed really not big enough, especially when you compare it to the dash 10 that our pump requires. Now this is required for the feed and the return, so we need to drill two holes. We chose the top of the tank here near the vent. We just need to mark the holes and drill them. Now to do that, we've got a couple tips for you to help keep the shavings out of the tank and to keep your safe. Which way you wanna go? This way. One easy way to keep shavings out of the tank is to drill up from the bottom so that gravity helps keep them out. We're also using a pneumatic drill since an electric one can generate sparks. A little grease on a step drill bit will also help keep the shavings under control as well as eliminating sparks. No need for high speed, take it slow and easy. We're gonna jump on in here with a reamer and knock the rough edge down on these holes. Then after that, a magnet is a great way to fish around for any shavings that manage to make it into the tank.
Just look at that. A little Earl's assembly lube on the O-ring for our bulkhead fitting will help us tighten the fitting without tearing the seal. Use a tape measure to find the length that our pickup hose needs to be. These Earl's Ultra Pro fittings don't just work great and look nice, they're a cinch to put together. Don't forget the lube! As for the hose, it's Earl's Ultra Pro, which is a premium line of plumbing. It's PTFE lined and is extremely flexible. Plus, it's good to use on gas, alcohol, ethanol, and E85. With the hydro mat rolled up nice and tight, we can work on getting it in the tank via the filler neck hole. Once it's in, we can attach our pickup hose. You can see that we have magnets attached to the corners to keep it in place once it's positioned on the bottom of the tank. This part can be a little tricky. We'll fish the pickup line to our bulkhead fitting and then get it threaded on. And in case you're wondering, the braided steel Ultra Pro line can be immersed in gas, no problem. We went ahead and reinstalled our pickup tube and sending unit assembly, but we did modify the tube. We're not gonna need that anymore, so we blocked it off, but we are gonna reuse the sending unit. We had to reinstalled our vent and installed new hoses here. These are 20 foot long each. That way we can ride them wherever we need to once we get it in the car. Well, let's go ahead and do that now. What do you say? All right. Still ahead, we gotta find a way to keep our big bad fuel pump off the pavement. Then we'll turn a whole bunch of stainless steel tubes into a gnarly three inch exhaust system to let our mercury exhale nice and easy. Plus a little history lesson about welding. Hey guys, while you were gone, we went ahead and reinstalled that tank and got the straps tight. We ran both of those feed and return lines all the way to the front of the car, but we need to break the feed line to install the pump. Now there's a couple tricks to this. The pump needs to be installed lower than the tank, low as possible, and normally you would mount a pre-filter and a post-filter, but because we're using that hydro mat, we only need the post-filter. We do need to include it here, so we just need to figure out where we're gonna mount this thing. Uh, this looks like a pretty good place to mount the pump. There's a pocket here in the floor so we can get it up, get it away from where anything on the road is going to hit it. We could probably mount it this way here. It'll keep it away from where the exhaust is going to be. The muffler is probably going to be right in here. So we'll make a bracket. Okay, we're not going to make this too complicated. We're going to use a piece of eighth inch plate, do a little bit of cutting, a little bit of welding, and it'll be that simple. Alrighty, we went ahead and drilled a couple of holes so that we can mount it to the frame. And then I went ahead and cut a couple gussets. So now we need to weld all these together and we can mount it up under the car. We busted out our ESOB MIG Master 280 Pro to get this bracket burned together. Thanks, looks good. I went ahead and made the ends on the hoses here and we're getting ready to mount the pump. Now, in order for us to do that, we're gonna use this tool right here. Now what this is looks like a rivet gun, but it's threaded nut inserts. What we're gonna do is just screw these on the tool here, slide them in, crimp them down, and we don't have to worry about the threads coming out. Like we said, we're gonna keep this nice and simple. A couple of 90s will get our line to the pump. 
and we'll get it screwed down to our bracket to keep it at home. We need to use this filter in addition to the hydromat. The zip ties are temporary while we work up the fittings for this filter. Some of these DEI exhaust bands will work like a charm to keep our filter in place once it's plumbed. There you go, we just gotta wire it up with a 40 amp relay and we're good to go. Now to finish up our fuel system, we went ahead and mounted our regulator up top. That way it's easy to keep a check on our fuel pressure and whenever you go to dial it in, you don't have to stand on your head. Oh yeah, another thing, we got our solenoids for the nitrous mounted up as well. Now to light the fire on this big block, we went with an MSD Blaster 2 coil along with one of their ignition boxes. And to send that fire where it needs to be, we got an MSD Pro Billet distributor and a set of their wires. With all that taken care of, the next thing we need to do is make sure this big block can exhale. After the break, we'll show you some new technology in the world of welding that can make your life way easier. And it'll help us get that exhaust welded up real nice. All right, we're getting to the point now where we can start installing our exhaust system on our big mercury. There's a few things we need to take into consideration. One of those is the drive shaft. Now, we don't have our drive shaft yet. We're actually going to replace it with a larger aftermarket one. So for now, we've just got this piece of tubing in here. We rigged it up, and that'll take the place for it. Also, for the rear end, now the exhaust is going to loop over the rear end, and when the suspension travels up and down, it could interfere. So we remove the springs, that way we can modulate the rear up and down with these pole jacks during installation. For the exhaust on our Mercury, we decided to go with a 3 inch stainless steel hot rod kit from Borla. We upgraded our kit to these big block Ford crate mufflers. In addition to those, we got a variety of mandrel bins to help us get that exhaust from the front to the back. Of course, it also includes the straight sections, you'll need to get it back there as well. And to top it all off, this stuff is going to look great under that car. We'll start by mounting the flange to the collector on our header. Then we'll grab a 45 degree tube and mark where we want to trim the end down to get it pointed in the right direction. With that done, we'll put it in place and grab our ESOB Rebel Welder. We set this welder up with stainless wire and we're going to put it on the Smart MIG mode, which will take any guesswork out of the settings. We're dealing with 16 gauge tube, so we'll roll with that. All right, now we've got this pipe headed straight toward the rear of the car. We're going to kick it in with this 45. We'll cut a section out of here and bring this pipe outward toward the hump here. Then we'll attach a straight pipe to it toward the muffler in the back. These are the goals for the exhaust system. Obviously, we want to make sure that it doesn't get into any moving parts like the drive shaft or get bound up in the suspension. But we also need to make sure that it's tucked up as high as possible against the floor so that it doesn't drag. Now we talked a little bit about the pipes we got from Borla, which we're using to build the exhaust system here on our Mercury. Now let's talk about the mufflers. This is a set of Borla's 3-inch crate mufflers, which are specially tuned to optimize the sound and performance of a built big block Ford, which is perfect for us. Now they offer those in three different sound levels, from touring all the way up to the super loud attack series. We chose the S-Type, which is the middle of the road option. Now we have 
our exhaust routed over the rear end and free and clear of all our rear suspension. We kept it kind of tight here under the frame rail. That way when we put some wider tires on the rear, we don't have to worry about it interfering. Now Borla did send us these really nice shiny tips as well, but really the only way we found we can make them look nice is to dump them all the way out the back like this. Then we have this long tube hanging out underneath the car. So we found a better way. We're gonna take these 45s like this, kick them out the side, tilt it down just a little bit, dump it out here right behind the rear tire. It's pretty good right there. That's what we're gonna do. After the break, we'll show you an easy way to get rid of rust and it's as safe as can be. Hey guys, while you were gone, we went ahead and pulled our exhaust system out from underneath our big Mercury. Now, if you'll remember, we tack welded all this together using that new Rebel that we got from Aesop Welding and Cutting. What's really cool about that machine is not only will it MIG, but it'll also stick and TIG weld. Lucky for us, because we want to make that new exhaust system look really nice. The way to set it up for TIG mode is first to reverse the polarity by switching the ground lead to the positive side. Then we'll grab the TIG torch and plug it into the negative side. We'll unhook the eight pin wire from the MIG lead and plug in the TIG one, which allows the machine to communicate with the torch. Then we can switch it from smart MIG mode over to lift TIG and then dial in our amperage. 40 is a good place to start in this case. Last of all, we'll turn on pure argon. ESAB is the front runner when it comes to welding technology. Its founder, Oscar Kielberg, developed the world's first coated welding electrode in 1904. This revolutionized the worlds of construction and fabrication with the advent of the arc welder, allowing vastly improved strength and speed of welding. So yeah, you could say that they invented welding as we know it. Of course, over the years they've improved the techniques with wire feeding, gas shielding, and TIG machines which continue to improve the quality and capability of welders. Our shop is outfitted 100% with ESOB welding gear, which we use exclusively. This Rebel unit is a great machine. It runs on both 110 or 220 power and works great for both the beginner and a master fabricator. Oh, and one trick that we're using to shield the backside of the tube is to plug another argon bottle into it and let it fill the exhaust with argon. That keeps the inside of the welds as strong and clean as the top side. There you go, we got our exhaust system all welded up. Now all we need to do is put it under the car. Hey guys, one last thing we wanna do is get our bumpers all stripped down so that we can send them off to advanced plating and have them re-chromed. Now the backing on these things are full of rust and oftentimes we'd sandblast them, but for those guys out there that don't have access to a sandblaster, we got something to get that rust off that'll work just as good. What we're gonna use to get this nasty rust off this old bracket is a Vaporust Super Safe Rust Remover. And it's so safe that in most cases, you can pour it down the drain. Now it's water soluble, pH neutral, which means it's non-acidic and biodegradable, which means a lot if you got kids or pets running around. Now we've let this bracket sit for a couple hours and where it's been in the solution has turned all black. Now all we have to do is get at it with this rag to see all the good that it's done. Now you can see that it removed all that old nasty rust with practically no effort. Now if you were working with a big piece, you could wrap it with a paper towel, then saturate it with the evapor rust, and then wrap all that with some plastic wrap, and then you'd be good to go. But we're all out of time for now, guys. We'll catch you on the flip side.